Hi, we're Collider, and we're introducing everyday off the shelf manufacturing materials to 3D printing. Imagine you have an idea, an idea for a part that could be a new product, that could improve a process on your factory line, or that could make something you're already selling even better. You want to test that idea, but standing in your way is the expense of a $10,000 mold and a four week delay for each iteration. Is it any surprise that hardware iteration is moving slower than software? Software development moves fast because it's cheap to try something new and you can get immediate real world feedback. This enables rapid iteration and thus innovation. What if hardware could be as iterative and adaptable as agile as software? The current methods for making production parts are injection molding, which is slow and time consuming, and 3D printing, which is faster, but ultimately makes weaker parts. New entrants, carbon and desktop metal, are at the cutting edge of 3D printing, driving towards production quality. Collider is part of this continuum, but we're doing something different. We're introducing Orchid a machine that makes parts in off the shelf manufacturing materials. The future of 3D materials choice is here with plastic, silicone, and rubber. And today, I am thrilled to announce that this machine makes parts in metal. We're starting with copper and stainless steel. Let me show you how it works. Orchid's process is so simple. It 3D prints a shell. It injects the shell, and then you dissolve the shell away in a hot water bath. In the case of metal, you'd center it in our furnace. The process takes just hours. Imagine having an idea in the morning and testing it in the afternoon in the exact materials that you'd ship to a customer. Think about how much that de-risks your design process. You have a real world test environment at your facility every single day. So. Let me show you a video of our patented process in action. We're accessing Collider's proprietary software through a web browser. We upload an industry standard design file, and then Collider software takes over to design a mold for your part. Then Orchid uses continuous DLP to print a hollow shell. This shell is completely smooth with no visible lines. Then Orchid injects the shell with an off the shelf manufacturing material that chemically cures to a solid part. This is a steel metal slurry, but it could easily be anything in our catalog. The process is exactly the same. Once the build cycle is complete, you remove the build platform from the machine and dunk it in hot water. The shell material dissolves away. Can we switch to Graham with the live demo? Graham has shells that he's been dissolving for about 20 minutes. This shell material is a world first and a patented collider invention that is critical to our technology. Let me show you a few applications. This steel part is an iteration of the video you just saw. It's the shift lever from the pedal on a custom motorcycle. CNCing this part would have taken a week. Collider got it to a green state in a matter of hours. This rubber part is from Weave, a custom footwear startup. They just finished their wildly successful Kickstarter and wanted to see this product in a customer ready material. We saved them thousands because they didn't have to cut a mold. This part cost under $60. And finally, custom prosthetics can cost thousands. So amputees usually buy uncomfortable one size fits most liners. Alongside a national prosthetics company, Collider can change the quality of someone's life with customization. This silicone liner is a perfect fit and it retails for under $200. Can we go back to the slides? Thank you. Orchid is five to 60 times faster, three to 125 times less expensive, and has a material catalog of hundreds. Orchid is so simple to run, no special ventilation or skilled labor required. You just plug it into the wall. When you're ready to kick off a print, you snap in the materials cartridge, push a button to start, and our software takes over. 
ORCID prints at vertical target speeds of 36 centimeters per hour. The build volume is about the size of two shoe boxes, and you can fill it with multiple parts with different parts. It's totally up to you. As I'm sure you can imagine, ORCID has applications across verticals. We're initially targeting service bureaus and rapid prototyping shops, and then we'll look to companies that can benefit from rapid iteration, like medical and automotive manufacturers. We are leasing ORCID and retailing a catalog of materials that goes into it so that you can have ORCID at your facility. Please go to collidertech.com to sign up to lease an ORCID today. We're currently accepting orders on our waiting list, and we'd love to hear from you. If you are a service bureau or a rapid prototyping shop, please reach out. Thank you. Appreciate it. Great. <laughs> Judges, who has questions? So go ahead. Sure. So um, first of all, congratulations. Super, Thank you. super cool project. It'd be helpful to hear maybe just to frame the conversation where you are. You've built your first full machine. Is we it have. Oh, um, this is just working. one. Just one, or do you have? Do any customers have the product today? Yep. So we have a couple of machines at our own facility. We don't have any machines at customer facilities okay. just yet. We did just open up a request for the beta program. And uh, we have a lot of initial interest. We have been making parts, though, for customers, both as kind of tryouts to determine whether or not it made sense for them to purchase a machine, as well as some parts for pay. Got it. OK. So one of the um, questions that ha comes up in service with service bureaus is the question around IP protection mm -hmm. for enterprises that want to make sure that their like, real ch clear assets are protected. Can you talk a little bit about how you handle that? Yeah, sure. So while our software shows uh, us accessing software through a web browser, it's not actually on a website. It's on a locally hosted server within your own facility, so your files never leave your own walls. That's good. Uh, Matt, go ahead. C can you help us understand what is new and what, what you guys have developed that is yours? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So this uh, concept of basically printing uh, a mold, a very material efficient mold, and injecting it inside of it as part of our intellectual property is around that. Uh, also a new uh, invention here is the material that we use to print that mold. So it's a material that can cure nice and rigid, can withstand the pressures of injection, uh, but also maintains its water solubility as you guys saw. Um, so those are kind of the, the key uh, developments here, as well as how we produce the continuous pull uh, enables great surface qualities and speed. Are you yeah, I have a question about the economics of the machine, leasing it and the materials you buy, and at what point do I, I'm okay waiting a week and going for injection molding? for example. Sure. So our breaking even quantities are at about 2,000 parts. And if you're ordering more than 2,000 parts, absolutely go cut a mold. Um, but what we're doing, we're targeting service bureaus initially so that customers who need one or two or three parts can mm -hmm. order from a third party. And then when the unit economics shift to having one in their facility, then they can lease a machine. Okay. Wait, so just to be clear, the stuff that's on the table is stuff that you, the machine is created, or that's like samples of things? That Correct. Oh. Do you guys want to like try it out? Can we? Oh yeah, take them. Here. Awesome. Right, well, that's happening. Other questions? Yes. Yes. Can you just also speak to the sort of uh, strength and sort of uh, fault tolerance of of the work you do? Yeah, absolutely. So from a strength perspective, this is going to be just as good as the materials you'd be using in a traditional molding process because they are the same materials. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's kind of one of the upsides of this technology is delivering kind of the off-the-shelf manufacturing materials that you're used to working with today. Right. Um, so if you're currently using it to make a dashboard part, it'll have the same material capabilities mm -hmm. as that dashboard part. Um, so by the way, great presentation. Thank you for doing this. Uh, I'm more of a software person, so this might be naive. I know a lot of people who have 3D printers. They've been using it for prototyping. So where does the line end between like a 3D printer that you can buy uh, uh, like off the shelf, and where do you guys come in? Like, and where is that? How does that market look like? Yeah, sure. Um, so with this technology, basically what you're looking for is primarily 3D printing as it sits today is primarily going to be used in a prototyping use case, uh, with the exception, as Kaki mentioned, of some new entrants into the market who have some really fantastic materials and teams. Um, having said that, you know, we're kind of in that same vein of production. And as Kaki said, if you order 2,000 parts, it makes sense to go with our technology. Honestly, if you're looking for the same materials, you can use this in the same way that you're working with 3D printer today with similar price points. Matt, you had a question? Yeah, maybe tell us a little more about your backgrounds. So 
I assume you spend some time in the 3D printing world. Yes, uh, so I've been working with industrial 3D printers since I was 15. Uh, I previously worked for Shapeways as a service bureau, um, working on technology development there, as well as working with manufacturers who are looking to adopt that technology. That work is actually what led to the development of what we're doing here. I'm the business half of the equation, so I have a business and law background, and I've experienced scaling B2B companies. Go ahead. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, maybe you have mentioned, but is there any materials that for which this does not work? <laughs> so we work with a super wide variety of materials is, is a great question. So fo currently we're focused primarily on the thermoset class of plastics. So things that are liquid at room temperature that chemically react with one another and cure inside of the molds. Um, so tons of parts that surround us are made that way. Um, we are not focused at this time on thermoplastics. However, there is a pathway to that uh, in our future. And as you can see, we are also focused on metals today. Yeah. Um, and the way that we're approaching that process, we can, instead of using uh, the powders that we're working with here today, there's all kinds of metal alloys. Uh, there's really no change to the process to, to work with more metals. Are you at all supply constrained in terms of materials or the materials you can deliver to your customers, or is that limitless? Yeah, so because we're working with pre-existing supply chain and materials that have been mass produced for decades, we're in a really good position. We don't have to worry about, you know, scaling up manufacturing of a custom photopolymer with the exception of the shell material. Can you, more, make it quick. can you go from prototyping to production, like the next generation? Yeah, so that's, ex that's exactly what we're very excited about, is the ability to both prototype and produce using the same platform, uh, which is an incredibly exciting opportunity, um, particularly when it comes to customized goods um, in the short term, I think is where we're going to see the most growth. All right, so before we send Clyde off the stage, you guys all got a chance to, to hold the, the prototypes in your hand. Do they feel good, sturdy? Like Real? Like, do you even know what's happening? Yes. <laughs> Feel. Up. Yeah, just throw it at him. Throw it at him. <laughs> right. Right. Throw it you can. Uh, all right. All right. All right. Let's get, get it back. All right, guys. Thank one more you. round of applause for Clyde. Thank you.